Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson's Night. Happy Monday. One of the great unsolved mysteries of the past four years is why certain types of people with certain types of jobs hate Donald Trump so much, really hate him, obsess over him, think about him when they wake up in the morning, would hurt him if they could. Why the fixation? It has nothing to do with the reasons that normal people sometimes get annoyed with Trump, the bragging, the short attention span, the rants on Twitter. None of that justifies hatred or obsession. Plenty of politicians have unappealing personal qualities. Teddy Kennedy killed a woman, and he's still a hero to the Democratic Party. No, the reason the ruling class despises Donald Trump is because they can't control him. Trump throws the bit. He refuses to mouth their lyrics. He will not obey. At any moment, Donald Trump is liable to come out with something that you're absolutely not allowed to say. Borders make countries, for example. China is our enemy. Whoopi Goldberg isn't that funny. All of it undeniably true, and that's the point and the problem. Trump's words hang in the air for all to see and to assess, and they are therefore a massive threat to people whose livelihoods depend upon fraud and lying. Trump is the most dangerous to his enemies when he tells the truth. In fact, there is enemies precisely because sometimes he does tell the truth, and he did it the other day. On Friday, the president gave a speech at Mount Rushmore. He spoke eloquently about the BLM riots and what they mean for the country. Here's part of it. Make no mistake, this left-wing cultural revolution is designed to overthrow the American Revolution. In so doing, they would destroy the very civilization that rescued billions from poverty, disease, violence, and hunger, and that lifted humanity to new heights of achievement, discovery, and progress. To make this possible, they are determined to tear down every statue, symbol, and memory of our national heritage. Our national heritage, it's something we can be proud of. This country defeated both fascism and communism. Our revolution inspired democratic revolutions around the world, from South America to India. Even today, pro-freedom demonstrators in Hong Kong, where the stakes are very high, wave the American flag to express their hope and their defiance. Our economy and our schools created the world's first and the greatest educated middle class. Our engineers and our scientists invented the airplane and the transistor and virtually everything else in modern life. They also transformed agriculture. They ended famine on most of the globe. Our richest citizens became famous, not for the palaces they built to themselves, but for the philanthropy they gave to others. Andrew Carnegie built countless libraries for the poor. John D. Rockefeller eradicated hookworm in the South. These are not the deeds of an evil country. They are the accomplishments of a great country. Yet, as the president pointed out, American school children learn virtually none of this. Instead, our curricula have become a toxic mix of lies and omission all of it designed to poison our children against the country that formed them. Against every law of society and nature, our children are taught in school to hate their own country and to believe that the men and women who built it were not heroes, but that were villains. The radical view of American history is a web of lies, all perspective is removed. Every virtue is obscured. Every motive is twisted. Every fact is distorted. And every flaw is magnified until the history is purged and the record is disfigured beyond all recognition. Every word of that is true. If you have kids in school, you know it may even be understatement. What is happening in our classrooms right now in 2020 is a crime. It is long past time that a sitting president said so. And then Trump kept going. Toward the end of his speech, he defended the core promise of America, the principle this country was founded on. It's the only principle that will allow America to survive going forward, a nation where all citizens are equal from birth and, as a result, enjoy equal rights and equal protection under the law. It's the America our Declaration of Independence describes. We believe in equal opportunity, equal justice, and equal treatment for citizens of every race, background, religion, and creed. Every child of every color 
born and unborn, is made in the holy image of God. We want free and open debate, not speech codes and cancel culture. We embrace tolerance, not prejudice. We support the courageous men and women of law enforcement. We will never abolish our police or our great Second Amendment, which gives us the right to keep and bear arms. We believe that our children should be taught to love their country, honor their history, and respect our great American flag. We stand tall, we stand proud, and we only kneel to Almighty God. This is who we are. This is what we believe. And these are the values that will guide us as we strive to build an even better and greater future. We almost never play sound bites that are that long. Politicians rarely give speeches worthy of it. Most of what they say is garbage, and we don't want to repeat it. But Friday's address at Mount Rushmore was probably the best, the single best speech Donald Trump has ever given. It was a roadmap for his reelection message, but more than that, it was a roadmap for the country itself. Equality, decency, pride in our nation, those were the themes. Naturally, the liars on television deeply hated every word of it. There's really a myth of America that this idea that America treated people well, that they treated men and women equally, that, that we founded this country just by our own wits, that that is actually a lie. And Much of American political propaganda over the course of our history um, has tried to completely erase, ignore, lie about the, the ugly parts of our history. Mount Rushmore isn't exactly the innocent ode to our founding fathers as described in our textbooks. And it's high time we disrupt that false narrative that far too many people believe. Here we are, celebrating the birth of a nation, independence for white men, at a site described by one Native American activist as, quote, a symbol of white supremacy. If you spent the rest of your life trying to locate, to identify the worst people in this country of 330 million, you couldn't get a purer distillation than what you just saw. These people are liars. They're the same people who spent the last month telling you that the riots you saw live on television were actually peaceful protests against racism. That was a lie. They knew it was a lie when they said it, but they said it anyway in order to undermine a country that they hate. Yes, hate. America deserves to be in flames. That is their view. And this weekend, they said it essentially out loud. Mount Rushmore, they told us, must go. It is illegitimate, just like the nation it celebrates. President Trump will be at uh, Mount Rushmore, where he'll be standing in front of a monument of two slave owners and on land wrestled away from Native Americans. With these founding fathers, with these monuments that we don't want to forget, what do we do with them? Maybe they don't stand in the town square, but should they stand anywhere? Should we demolish them? It's been polluted. It's been desecrated by putting these slave-owning, racist, horrible, horrible white men in 60-foot statues on this wall. When you look at this place, this land, the Black Hills, the history is a dark one. But it's not just the land that has been stolen in a place like Mount, Ru Mount Rushmore in the Black Hills. It's the, the theft of history, the theft of the narrative. It's worth reminding folks that the man who carved the monument behind me had deep ties to the KKK. The mother of all photo ops, Mount Rushmore. And we know why this president just can't resist going there. So Mount Rushmore is now a symbol of evil, just like your nation. Where's this all going? As writer Matt Taibbi put it, quote, CNN even put independence in quotes when describing the holiday. This will end with Wolf Blitzer dressed in a dashiki, pulling the switch to dynamite the Statue of Liberty, end quote. Pretty funny, but suddenly it's getting easier to imagine that happening. On the morning of July 4th, the Washington Post summarized the president's speech, the one clips of which we displayed this way, quote, President Trump's unyielding push to preserve Confederate symbols and the legacy of white domination, crystallized by his harsh denunciation of the racial justice movement Friday night at Mount Rushmore, has unnerved Republicans who have long enabled him. For real. That was not an opinion piece, by the way, on the op-ed page. It was a news story written by two Washington Post reporters. 
They described the president's defense of equality under the law as, quote, Trump's push to amplify racism. Jeff Bezos' newspaper. Local politicians joined the chorus. The mayor of Nashville canceled the city's 4th of July fireworks, but allowed BLM protests to continue unimpeded. In Richmond, city officials ordered a construction site to remove an American flag. It was too provocative, they said. Meanwhile, the statue of mass murderer Vladimir Lenin stands totally unmolested in the city of Seattle tonight. Officials there see nothing provocative about it. So where's Joe Biden on all of this as the revolution continues to pace? Biden is supposed to be a moderate, remember? That was his chief appeal. But there was nothing moderate about Biden's 4th of July statement. Instead, it was a full-throated attack on the United States. Our country was founded on an idea. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. We've never lived up to it. Jefferson himself didn't. He held slaves. Women were excluded. American history is no fairy tale. It's been a constant push and pull between the two parts of our character. The idea that all men and women, all people are created equal, and the racism that has torn us apart. We have a chance to rip the roots of systemic racism out of this country. That's your 4th of July message? Systemic racism? Something you can't even define that has no real definition? Really? Wagging your finger in the face of the nation that promoted someone as mediocre as you to the position you currently hold? This is the man who could soon be our figurehead. But how about the actual presidential candidate, whoever Biden picks as his VP running mate? Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois is a top contender for the job. You're not supposed to criticize Tammy Duckworth in any way because she once served in the military. Most people just ignore her. But when Duckworth does speak in public, you're reminded what a deeply silly and unimpressive person she is. Here's Tammy Duckworth from over the weekend telling us it's time to get rid of George Washington. I know that you support changing the name of military bases named after Confederate leaders, but there are leaders like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson who were slave owners, and some people are demanding that their monuments come down too. So in your view, where does it end? Should statues, for example, of George Washington come down? Well, let me just say that we should start off by having a national dialogue on it um, at some point. A national dialogue, please. They're not looking for any kind of a colloquy. What they want is a soliloquy. We speak, you shut up and listen. So what to make of all of this? Well, it's long been considered out of bounds to question a person's patriotism. It's a very strong charge, and we try not ever to make it. But in the face of all of this, the conclusion can't be avoided. These people actually hate America. There's no longer a question about that. And yet, paradoxically, at the same time, they desperately want to control America more than anything. And that leads to the most basic of all questions. Can you really lead a country that you hate? Ask yourself, what kind of parent would you be if you hated your children? What kind of officer would you make if you didn't care about your troops? It would be awful. The results would be ugly. It would not work. Loving the people you lead, caring deeply about them, is the most basic prerequisite of leadership. The leaders of today's Democratic Party do not. They despise this country. They have said so. They continue to. That is shocking, but it is also disqualifying. We cannot let them run this nation because they hate it. Imagine what they would do to it.